Hey guys, welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. This episode we're actually going to do something that is requested quite a lot. We're going to do something that is also required. We're going to change our input to have some phone input. So right now we're actually using the inputs from the horizontal and also vertical axis, which means we are binded to our keyboard on the WASD keys and also the arrow keys. Now this is not going to work on a phone obviously because we don't have such buttons. As you can see over here, this is the scene we had uh, last episode. We actually started creating some movement for our player so we can now move around. In this one, we are going to change the inputs we were to use to a virtual joystick. So let's go ahead and do just that. We are going to right click anywhere in our uh, project folder and create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call mine virtual joystick. Now let's go ahead and open it up in your favorite script editor, I'll be using MonoDevelop. And what we're going to do in this one, we are going to clean it up like we always do. And then after that, let's go ahead and include a uh, two namespace. So the first one is going to be Unity Engine.UI. We're going to be using some of the new UI to create our joystick. And then after that, we'll also be using something a little bit more um, hidden we're going to be using the event systems. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is implement three different interfaces. And these are the on drag handler, the eye pointer up handler, and also the eye pointer down handler. Now we've added these three interfaces and these three interfaces, they implement three functions. So three different functions that we're going to be putting down here, let's go ahead and make sure we declare them right away so we don't forget about these. Because if we do forget about one of these, uh, our script is not going to compile. So let's do a public virtual on drag, just like this. And this on drag function takes in parameter a pointer event data that we're going to call PED. Okay, so now we're done with the eye drag handler. Let's go ahead and do the other one. So a uh, public virtual void. Oh, I'm going a little bit too fast. So uh, public virtual void on drag and then the second function is going to be on pointer down, which also takes in a pointer event data just like this. Now the next one is fairly simple as well. It is going to be the on pointer up. So I'll just copy this down here. I'll change down for up. Okay. So now we've got our three interfaces. They're all implemented inside of here. And uh, just a side note like that, if you decide not to use the on pointer down, so if you just go ahead and say, I'm, I'm not going to need this, make sure you also delete it from up here, else it's not going to compile. All right. So the next step we're going to take, now that we got our virtual joystick, is we're actually going to make a piece of UI using two different image. And we're, we're simply going to declare them real quick up here. And then after that, we'll go uh, inside of the Unity engine and actually create them. So let's do private image, BG image. So this is going to be the image, the background image of our joystick, which is also going to be a region that we can click in. And the second image is going to be the joystick image itself. All right. So let's go ahead and create them right inside of our game. So uh, your canvas over here, we are going to right click on your canvas, create a new image. And we're going to call this one virtual joystick container. And you're going to see it's a fairly simple UI, it's not going to be too complicated. So I've put my scene in 2D by clicking this button over here. And this is my virtual joystick container. Now it has a uh, blank square because we've created a image and that's a default image that they give us. So what I'm going to do is I am going to anchor it at the bottom left down here by pressing on this button and then holding shift and also putting my pivot point down here as well. Now after that, I will move the X to zero, the Y to zero maybe scale it up for say um, 200 by 200. And that should be pretty much it. Now note that this is your background image as well. So this is going to serve as your background image. The size of that, of that square is pretty much going to be 
uh, the area where you can click to get the desired effect. Now, um, I don't think we have any sprite that we can use that makes sense. We can't be using these. So let's just use the default Unity knob. So uh, even if you haven't made any texture just yet, you still have access to this guy. So we're going to be using this one. Let's go ahead and just darken it a little bit like that so we can tell that this is the background. And now once this is completed, we are going to right click on it again and create another image inside of the container. Now this image is going to be the joystick itself. So let's call it joystick. I'm also going to change the sprite for a knob, just like this. And uh, here we have it. This is pretty much it. All right. Now let's finally add our script to the virtual joystick container. So our virtual joystick script, let's drag and drop it right here. So the UI part is done. Let's go ahead and go back inside of our script and we are going to declare ourselves a start function. So up here, let's do a private void start. Again, callback from Unity, so no mistake in this. And then we will do background image is equal to get component and we're going to get the image component. So wherever this script is, we're going to do a get component on that game object. So it can only go on these four components and we are going to get the image one. Now we also need to get this image, so the joystick image. Now this one is hidden inside of the first children of the container, so it's right here. We're starting from here, so we gotta tell him, in your children, go ahead and find me this image. The way we're gonna do it is by simply saying, joystick container, well actually the joystick image is equal to get component in children. Now make sure this is the get component with no s because there is a overload of here that takes in multiple. Uh, that doesn't take in but that returns multiple component. Now we only need the first one so we'll say get component in children image. Alright. Now with this our setup should be done and we can now start coding inside of our three callback over here. Now quickly before we get started, what I've did is I've put some debug.log inside of the three um, events and we're going to take a look at what it gives us inside of the game. So now if I go over here and I press on my object, as you can see we get the on pointer down. Now I'm going to release my press and we get the on pointer up. Um, as you could tell, we didn't get the on drag events because in order to call the on drag event, we have to be holding the button just like this and then we have to move like that. So whenever I'm moving, it's being called quite often. Right, so we're going to be using these three events to actually create the logic of our joystick. Now let's start up here by declaring a vector2 that I'll call position is equal to vector2.0. Uh, you'll see why we need a vector2 in a moment. And now please bear with me, this is a fairly long function call we have to do if rec transform utility dot screen point to local point inside of a rectangle and if you check the parameters we take in a rec transform parameter so let's go ahead and uh, write this function I'm going to go on the other line so we can actually see it but the first parameter we have to take in is the rec transform itself so where exactly are we allowed to click now we get this in the background image, so go ahead and type in background image dot rec transform. This is it for the first parameter. And then the second parameter is where exactly have you clicked inside of that, so the screen point you've clicked. Now lucky enough we get that inside the pointer event data that we get in parameters, so let's go ahead and use that. So we're going to say ped dot position. So as you can see down here, it says the current pointer position. The next one is the camera we are testing against. And again, we're really lucky. We get this inside of the PED event as well. So if you type in PED and then you do press event camera. So this was the main camera that was actually active uh, when you did the press. And finally, we have to return a vector to local point. So we're going to do out pass. Okay, 
Um, by the way, this is a if statement. So if we do manage to click inside of our rectangle, we get to do some action inside of here. So go ahead and open up the curly brace because if we do manage to hit our uh, rectangle, we're gonna do some operation on our position vector. So let's go ahead and do just that. So position Y, I mean position X, is equal to position dot X divided by background image dot rec transform dot size dot X. Now by doing this, we get a ratio of where exactly you've clicked inside of that rectangle. So let's go and do the same exact thing for the Y. We're gonna do position.y is equal to position.y divided by background image dot rec transform dot size delta dot Y. All right. So once we get that ratio, we actually have to multiply it depending on which direction the uh, pivot point is. So what I like to do is actually declare a new float. So float X, is going to equal background image dot rec transform dot pivot point and now we're going to do a ternary operator so make sure that you put a parenthesis over here so if our pivot point dot x is equal to one so that means our pivot point is on the right then we're going to do position dot x times two plus one and you're going to see why in a, in a moment and if we are not um, if we are not on one, so if, if our pivot point is not on the right, we're gonna do position.x times two minus one instead, just like this. And we do the exact same thing for the y. So again, float y is equal to background image dot rec transform dot pivot dot y is equal to one. If that's the case, then we do position.y times two plus one, else we do position.y times two minus one. All right, so that's a bit confusing, I know, but it works like a charm. Very well, so after that, once that is completed, we actually have all the information we want. So we have to store them somewhere. Now let's go ahead and declare ourselves up here. This We're gonna declare a property. So let's make sure that this is public, vector three, input direction, I will call it and just put it in a set get. So now this is a property and this is pretty much also what we're gonna be calling from outside to get the information we want. Okay, so we've created it up here. Let's let's just go ahead and assign it to uh, zero so we don't get any kind of error uh, in case we don't press on the button fast enough. So let's assign it to zero. Now back inside of our on drag function, we're gonna go down here and assign that. So. Uh, input direction is equal to a new vector 3 in which we do x, we do 0 for the y, and then we do y for the z. So this way we transform our 2D vector into a 3D vector by ignoring the y component of this one. And that is because you don't want, you don't want to be moving on a vertical plane. Very well, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the undrag function, I believe. Oh, actually, never mind. We have to move our image. Remember how we have this joystick image over here? Let's actually move it to give some kind of feedback to the player. So we're going to do joystick image is equal, actually, no, joystick image dot rec transform dot anchored position is equal, and I'll move line to a new vector three. And I will move it by input direction dot x times and I'll multiply that by a third of my size so um, my image is not going to be going past a third of the size in X of my rec transform so I know this is a little bit complicated when I say like this but I'll just do um, input direction dot X times BG image dot rec transform dot size delta dot X divided by 3 and that's going to be my X now as for the Y I'll do the exact same thing, but this time using the input direction dot y. Or should I say z? Yeah, input direction dot z times background image dot rec transform dot size delta. Now this one is y divided by three. Okay, let's close this off and have, have a look at what this gives us inside of the game. So I am going to boot the game and I am actually moving the wrong thing. That's quite funny. Let's go back inside of our code. What exactly have I done wrong? 
Okay, so small mistake over here. Uh, when I'm doing a get component in children, I'm actually getting the wrong image. So I'm getting this image up here. And that's the background image. What I want is the joystick image. Now I thought that this would ignore the image, uh, my background image, because it's not in children, it's actually on the object itself. But apparently it doesn't work, so what I'll do is I'll say joystick image is equal to transform dot get child at the index zero and then we'll do a get component image let's go ahead and try this out once more hopefully this time it works now it does make more sense except for the fact that we can actually go pretty much wherever we want so that's not going to cut it I have forgotten something right in between where we move our image and the input direction we have to actually check, is this input direction bigger than 1? If it is, let's go back to 1, because um, just like in the old game, if you're moving on a diagonal axis, you might actually go faster, and that's because we forget to normalize a vector. So say your x was 1, and your uh, y was also 1, then you'd have a vector length of 1.33. And then that's going to pretty much break your game in terms of uh, multiplying that value after that. So we're going to do input direction is equal and then we'll do a ternary operation here. So if input direction dot magnitude is bigger than 1 then we're going to do input direction dot normalize. Else if it is not bigger than 1 let's just keep the one we had so type in input direction once more. Now this way we should actually not uh, have any more problems. Let's go ahead and try it out. And as you can see we now cap over here and that's good. That's exactly what we want. Now if we were to test this out just by say just writing a debug.log down here and debug the input direction let's see if this actually makes sense. So we're gonna press play on this again and if you check the values down here they they're actually pretty good. They all make sense. Right, so this is exactly the value we're going to be using when we need to move our player around. But first, what I'd like to do is address some bugs that we currently have. So if we take a look at this joystick down here and I only press on it once, just like this, and I hold, as you can see, we're not actually getting any feedback out of it and we're not actually moving. And that's because it is only being called on the undrag event. So if I move it around a little bit, as you can see, it now moves. But by simply clicking on it, nothing happens. And that's pretty much because this is called, but it's not calling this code over here. Now what we're going to do is fairly simple. Inside of the one of the uh, on pointer down function, we're going to call the undrag function. So that's our that's going to be our little hack. And we're going to send in the PED parameter that we get. So by doing that, if I go back inside of my game and I do a single press, as you can see, we got the movement and the input direction is now uh, has now been changed. Now, one last thing that I'd like to address before we go to to moving this character around with joystick is when I actually release it, I'd like the joystick to go back in the middle and the input direction to be reset on vector 3.0. Now lucky for us, we do have an event that is being called exactly when we release our joystick and that is the onPointer up function. So in here, we're going to say input direction is equal to vector3.0. And after that, let's, uh, let's move our joystick image back to where it belongs. So joystick image dot transform dot anchored position is equal to vector3.0, just like this. Now we should not need to do any more changes in here. Let's actually test it out one last time. And if I go in here and I press, then I release. As you can see, it snaps back to the center and that's exactly what we want. So the joystick should now work fine. Let's go ahead and plug our values inside of the player itself so we can actually uh, see some movement. Right. So what we're going to need is we are going to open up the motor script inside of here. Let's go declare a public virtual joystick that we'll call move joystick. 
can now have a reference to this very virtual joystick over here. So let's go ahead and click on player. As you can see, since we've added a public field, it is now over here. So we're going to go ahead and drag and drop our, our uh, virtual joystick container right inside of that field. So right now, this value over here is equal to this joystick down here. Right. So once that is completed, we're going to go inside of our pool input uh, section. So that's over here where we actually get the, uh, the inputs from the keyboard. So this section here that I uh, highlight is pretty much dedicated to getting the inputs from the keyboard. Now I want to keep that in there because for some reason I actually want to test it out uh, on the keyboard before I'm actually ready to build it to the phone. And I don't really want to be using uh, my mouse to click on the screen pretty much all the time. So I like having the keyboard input. I'll actually keep them there. But if I move using the joystick, I'm going to overwrite my keyboard input. So that's what I'll do right here, actually. We're going to do if move joystick dot input direction is not equal to vector 3.0. So if we have if it's only like a slight movement, this is going this is going to trigger. But if if we have some kind of movement on that very joystick, then we're gonna do direction is equal to move joystick dot input direction. So this way we actually override all of this if there is even a slight change in the joystick itself. Let's go ahead and play this and move around and as you can see this works all right so that's going to be pretty much it for this video guys um if you learned something or if you enjoyed the video please leave me a like i really appreciate it and you guys just been awesome on the uh the few past videos so i'm really grateful for that and uh yeah so if you have any question or comment please leave them in the comment section below i'll try to answer as soon as possible other than that please subscribe for more tutorials like these and i will be seeing you guys in the next episode